Okay, uh, uh, Svetomira Ivanova, please. please. Sofia University, and the topic is printed versus online Japanese language dictionaries and study applications. Oh, it's, it's a similar and well, a related topic. Good. Good evening, everyone. I'm really honored to be here. Uh, actually, probably most of our online attendees do not know, but we are uh, having this conference and uh, uh, from an actual palace, right? Uh, old Russian palace. So probably um, this is will be, this will be the only. Uh, time when I uh, present from uh, such a wonderful conference room and it very well suits, I think, uh, uh, um, the topic virtuality and materiality of the conference. So I'm really honored to be here and I would like to thank um, the EAJRS board for uh, giving me the chance to come to be live here <laughs> to present live from uh, St. Petersburg. Thank you very much. Uh, so my name is Svetomira Ivanova and um, the topic of my presentation is very much similar to that of my colleague uh, Fedianina, only it's a little bit narrower. Uh, I'm looking only at printed and uh, virtual dictionaries. So let me give you some more information. Thank you. Uh, first, um, my home university, my mother university, Sofia University, began enrolling students interested in Japanese language in the late 60s. And at that time, evening classes were only available and they were taught by graduates of Russian universities, like all of our professors who are now uh, at um, a very honorable age. They have studied um, in Russia, most of them in Moscow, some of them in St. Petersburg. Uh, our university uh, and the Japanese studies department at our university is the only institution in Bulgaria, we are proud to be the only institution in Bulgaria uh, offering Japanology at all three levels. We have bachelor's degree students, master's degree students, and PhD students. Uh, and uh, we are also proud of uh, hosting one of uh, EAJRS conferences. Uh, every year, we welcome over 30 newbies, freshmen. Uh, I will be responsible for first year students um, this year. Um, as any in every institution, we have an overview, we have uh, our uh, special way of thinking about education, about uh, how we do our work. Uh, and uh, we are united by the idea of con conscious education. This is a book uh, by the, uh, the head of our department. It, um, it's uh, titled in Bulgarian, it says conscious education. So um, that kind of education, the, the education we promote centers on interrelatedness between individuals' awareness of their environment, what is around us, and their self-awareness as socially immersed human beings who realize their mission and responsible, human beings that are part of society. Um, so, what is the importance of con conscious education in practice? We provide students with opportunities to teach, to translate, to interpret, and even to participate in decisions when it comes to innovative university curricula. We had a question uh, a while ago. We ask our students what they think about uh, the subject, the disciplines, the, our policy, and we often distribute questionnaires and make surveys. And um, 
it's not a survey I made, but uh, a survey made by a colleague of mine. It was conducted in January 2020. And one of the results of the survey was that students wish to read more contemporary Japanese literature in the, in the original. Reading Japanese in the original um, gives you, boasts your confidence. And I think that because of the pandemic situation, every one of us and also students turned to reading as a form of escape. So uh, Sofia University was closed for a year and a half. We only had online education, but uh, online lectures, but the library was open. So when I went to work, I could often meet my students sitting and reading at the library, of course, wearing masks. Uh, so I was wondering what I can do to meet their needs in my classes. Um, every member of the Japanese studies department team teaches language. Although we have PhDs in history, me, myself, I'm a sociologist, uh, all of us uh, speak uh, and um, understand and teach Japanese. So in my case, I had to prepare a course in Japanese language for a third year BA students. And again, I had in my mind the idea that I will be teaching language, but those students wish to read literature in the, in the original. So I started to looking for suitable resources, not, not the popular textbooks or grammar books. Um, and uh, in, my, in my mind, I had my own goal uh, when bachelor, uh, bachelors graduate, they have a um, translation part. A part of their exam is translation. So they have to be ready for any kind of translation, any topic, but most likely it's fiction. My colleagues decide to give them fiction to translate. So another thing is I'm always trying to link my classes to the classes of um, other colleagues. So if I'm teaching Japanese language uh, and I'm, uh, let's say, working with a certain author, let's say Murakami Haruki, I will talk to my friend, to my colleague who teaches literature to try to link her lectures to mine. Um, so anyway, I was trying to think of resources to use in my Japanese language classes and uh, they cannot be books, books, because I'm teaching language. They should be books that look like textbooks. So what I found is bilingual books that might be a little bit easier to understand. And unfortunately, when it comes to Bulgarian book, there is only one bilingual book published, Japanese and Bulgarian. Uh, so I was wondering what to do. And I opened the book. Here you can see the book. It says in Bulgarian, I'm sorry, I haven't translated it. It says Japanese stories. I opened the book, but um, it was, uh, the, the printing was really strange and I thought that it might be very difficult for the students to use. So I started looking for other resources, for other bilingual books to use. And I found some, but unfortunately those were in Japanese and English. So when working in class, I did not give the students the English translation. First, I gave them some words, glossary. Some of those books have uh, special glossaries. Then uh, I asked them to listen to the stories. And then in the end, we tried to translate those uh, in Bulgarian. Although uh, in the end, I also showed them uh, the translation into English. So all of a sudden I understood that I'm asking my students to translate into Bulgarian. So in order to translate into Bulgarian, you have to use dictionaries. You have to have dictionaries. In 20 language, you have to use dictionaries. So 
I myself uh, did a thorough research on how many and what kind of dictionaries exist when it comes to Japanese and Bulgarian. And I myself was very surprised that there is only one Japanese Bulgarian dictionary, only one. And it was published, as you can see, in 2006 by Professor Ivanov. Uh, he is a Moscow University graduate, and it's a very small dictionary. The entries are around 4,000. So that's the only printed Japanese Bulgarian dictionary. Uh, here in this room, uh, online attendees cannot uh, see, but there are thousands of Russian Japanese dictionaries or Japanese Russian dictionaries. So from my research, and I'm 99% sure this is the only dictionary that exists. I, I did some more research, which is not very helpful because we are translating from Japanese into Bulgarian, but there is another small dictionary published in 2008, Bulgarian Japanese dictionary. Then again, by the, the same author, we have a Japanese kanji dictionary that can be useful for translation uh, from the Bulgarian. I was looking uh, and that's it. Bulgarian author, only one, only three dictionaries. Again, I'm 99% sure of uh, my research. So what, were the, what, were, what was the result when I started looking for other authors? First, we have one Bulgarian Japanese dictionary uh, published by a Japanese researcher in 2003. Again, a very small dictionary. It's a learner's dictionary consisting of not more than 2,000 entries. And then I found the only dictionary published by a Japanese a publishing house. Uh, it's uh, Rokuya Matsunaga's dictionary. It's Bulgarian Japanese dictionary published in 1994. Here I have to be honest, this is the third edition of the dictionary. And the previous two editions were really small, again, small dictionaries consisting of 1,500 and 6,000 words. So we really had a problem. My students have to have a state exam and translate from Japanese into Bulgarian, and to be honest, from Bulgarian into Japanese also. And they have no resources in Bulgarian. So what do, do, what do we do? I ask them, what are you doing? How do you prepare for class? I'm asking you to translate into Bulgarian and how do you do it? So uh, I distributed a questionnaire regarding printed online and electronic dictionaries and dictionary applications aimed at students. It was distributed last year and um, it was actually preparation for last year's uh, St. Petersburg conference. So I distributed it and I got 50 valid answers from Sofia University second and third year Japanese study students and also from Veliko Ternov University where there is a major called applied linguistics with Japanese and English language. All uh, of uh, the answers I got from those students who are active Japanese learners and all of them are Japanese nationals. So they are fluent in Bulgarian language. So what were the results? Thank you. What were the results? None of the students has used paper dictionaries and knows how to work with this. At the library, we have those dictionaries that I showed in my presentation, but we also have Jiten, Japanese, Japanese dictionary. So none of them has used those dictionaries. They mainly use online dictionaries and applications. And here I have listed the ones they use the most. Jisho, Rikai-kun, Kanji Study, Akebi. Of course, I asked them, how did you understand? How did you learn about those applications and uh, online resources? They learn from their peers, from their senpai, from their uh, older and experienced experienced, I'm sorry, friends, the ones that use it all the time and tell them, okay, this one is good. Again, once again, 
Those applications are all in English. They are in English and we are Bulgarians. So in class, we, we jump from one language to another all the time. So what uh, are the most useful ones? I'm not sure about Russian students, but for Bulgarian Japanese studies students, Jisho and Takoboto are found to be the most useful. Electronic dictionaries. When I was uh, a student, I used to ask people to go who, go who went to Japan to buy an electronic dictionary for me. They are not popular anymore. Um, then uh, I asked my students, would they join special lectures dedicated to work with paper resources, with paper dictionaries? And um, almost more than half of them were uh, really glad to join, would be really glad to join. And then uh, in the end, I asked them, um, so what would you do at the state exam? And they said they uh, would be very happy if they were allowed to bring some kind of dictionaries, can be paper dictionaries if they are used to working at them uh, uh, at the time of the state exam. One, uh, again, uh, results. Students 100% use English resources when translating from Japanese into Bulgarian because as I have already stated, there are not enough resources in Bulgarian language, just one dictionary. Students, however, do not think that the above fact lack of uh, resources determines or influences in any way the quality of their translations. Students feel comfortable when using non-native language resources and students would like to be offered more translation classes. Once again, I did my experiment in my Japanese language classes, but they would like to have specialized translation classes starting from their third year. They now have them only uh, in the fourth year. So moving on to my conclusion, although the lack, not complete lack, but um, a lack of Bulgarian Japanese or Japanese Bulgarian dictionaries is obvious, students manage to produce high quality translations and graduate. I, sometimes I check some of their uh, state exam translations. Most of them are really good. Previous generation of Japanologists in Bulgaria used to rely on Russian language resources. Yes, we do have a lot of Russian Japanese and Japanese Russian dictionaries in our libraries. When it came to translation from the Japanese, while well, nowadays, with the, the end of communist era, with the change of the generation, we rely more on resources written in English. Uh, this is my last slide, I think. Being fluent in English is a prerequisite for becoming a successful student in Japanese studies in Bulgaria. You have to know English first to enter the university and then to, to be able to use resources. Uh, and then something very interesting. We have meaningful plurilingualism discussions in class. We jump from Bulgarian, Japanese, English, and then sometimes we have uh, Russian exchange students from Moscow State University. We even sometimes jump to Russian language. Uh, so we have complex linguistic and cultural situations. Japanese language learning leads to fulfilling and exciting understanding of self-competence in other languages. So while they are studying Japanese, on the way to studying Japanese, they become more confident in English and other languages. And of course, we deepen the openness to cultural otherness. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, thank you very much. On the last slide, you can uh, get the feeling how our classes uh, go, jumping from one language to the other. Thank you once again. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any any comments, questions? Yes.
I have a comment and two questions. So thank you for your presentation. It was really interesting and useful, for example, for me, like a teacher of Japanese. So thank you very much. And um, so though we have uh, thousands of uh, Russian, Japanese and Japanese Russian dictionaries, please don't worry that your students can't use paper dictionaries, of course. Half of Russian students don't know even what is Russian Japanese dictionary and how to open it from what side, from what uh, site, how to use it. So keep calm. And uh, for example, in my group, only except for me, no one, uh, everybody was shocked when on the exam uh, we should use only the paper dictionaries. So don't worry. Uh, well, uh, my question number one. Um, you are from Bulgaria, from Sofia University, but uh, in Japan, in Tokyo, there is one more Sofia University. Correct. Do you have any connections between? No, there are many Sofia universities all over, over the world. Uh, no, it's not linked. But I have a question for you regarding your first comment. Do you have digital resources or electronic dictionaries in Russian? Russian Japanese? Yes. 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 We have. That's the difference. We do not have ones in Bulgaria. So even if you are not used to using paper dictionaries, you still have resources you can lean to. You do not have to jump to a completely different language when you do translations. Am I correct? Yes, but sometimes we have to jump. Uh, of course, course. Uh, of course. Sometimes in the electronic uh, dictionaries, there is one or two translations that strange word in Russian that we even can't understand. So we have to go to English ones to just to understand if we are right. But yes, I, yeah. I, I caught your idea, yes. And my second question, um, did you or your colleagues any um, sometimes had an idea to write your own dictionary and to publish it? Thank you very much. Um, I, as I already mentioned, I'm not a linguist. Uh, my major is sociology. But um, I have uh, talked and uh, I had uh, several meetings with my colleagues. Um, the question is, is it really needed? Is it needed? Do we really need it? Even if we manage to do it, is it really needed? This is one question. And second question, my original idea for Tokyo 2020 Olympics was uh, me, myself, to make a very small dictionary, probably with um, 200 entries, and offer it to media, like uh, newspapers and TV, so that they can use correctly the terminology when um, having uh, online um, or uh, live uh, productions from, uh, from Tokyo. And uh, I shared my idea with some of some of the media, but nobody was interested. So once again, the the need to to produce to do something, it, it there there should be some reason behind it. Otherwise, it won't be used. So this is a great question, and we are still discussing it. But um, yes, so I see. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, are there any online questions? Maybe one brief one? No? No yes. questions? Yeah, yeah, I would like to. Uh, Naomi Magnussen. Okay. Can I join? Hello, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I am uh, first in uh, Norway, and the Norwegian language is rather small, and we have really few uh, language uh, dictionaries between Norway, Norwegian, and uh, Japanese. But some um, student and uh, um, graduated uh, student uh, and some uh, uh, how to say it, uh, some some uh, um, private uh, an initiative made in Jisho dot no. I sent now chat right. uh, an uh, URL and this is <laughs> online based and. Uh, um, uh, voluntary. It is rather amateur one. Oh. And uh, what kind of quality we need, uh, you need, it is also one thing, but this age, digital, digital age, maybe it is possible to engage 
students. And this is also crowdfunding um, projects. And uh, sometimes they have uh, working, online working uh, activities. Or, of course, what kind of uh, quality and what kind of linguistic uh, quality you would like to have. But this is a kind of maybe activity we can uh, some trial uh, engage both students and uh, the people who are interested in and of course university uh, staff if they uh, agree to do it. Thank you very much. Um, I have a few comments to make. Um, thank you once again. My students do use Jisho. The thing is, um, uh, I'm sorry, you said you're from the Netherlands, right? Norway, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but Bulgarian is a Slavic language. It's even the alphabet is completely different. So they have to jump from uh, Bulgarian to English and Japanese. So it makes it even harder for, for them uh, for the level of, of Japanese education. Uh, we have to produce the best translators. We are the only uh, institution in Bulgaria uh, that uh, has um, master's and PhD courses. So we do have to produce the best translators. So the only solution is to be very careful and to um, guide them on the way. And uh, what I have uh, found as a solution for myself is um, they asked for it more Tr traditional translation classes, not only Japanese language classes, but profile on translation. Um, and also uh, when they enter university, for example, I will do it with my first year students this year. I will make a very short uh, course. It takes one hour to explain to them how to use paper dictionaries. And uh, because there are not many paper dictionaries when it comes to Bulgarian, uh, I will uh, st stress on English Japanese paper dictionaries uh, and also G10, Japanese Japanese. It, it would be very helpful to them, I think. It, 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 does, does it make sense? Does it answer your question? Yeah. Yes, I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, okay, so I guess we don't have any time <laughs> for any more questions. So thank you and let's thank move you. on. Thank you very much. Thank you.